good morning i am dr shanmuga priya i'll be dealing with biochemistry for 3 days or 3 to 4 days and uh, today i plan to uh, discuss chemistry and metabolism of carbohydrates so as a prelude to the session i don't expect you to know any fact related to biochemistry because i know it's not practically possible for you to remember something which i've learned probably 4 or 5 years back so i'll be telling you all the facts straight away and uh, all that's expected from your side is uh, to be attentive and to follow uh, every fact and to memorize every fact every now and then because uh, building concepts will be based on the facts which i'm telling you first so uh, with this let's get on to the session so first about chemistry of carbohydrates let me start with definition of carbohydrates i feel instead of you getting to know the definition of carbohydrates first it'll be easier to remember Uh, if you try to derive the definition of the same by looking at these two structures so look at structure of glucose on one hand and structure of fructose on the other hand uh, you don't have to memorize any of these structures just observe these two structures and let me know one similarity which is striking between the two and uh, one difference between the two just observe and uh, try to find out one similarity between the two i'll give you probably one second time other than both having six carbon atoms is there anything which is striking both these structures so one similarity is both have multiple hydroxyl groups both glucose and fructose have multiple hydroxyl groups that's one similarity which you can observe in any carbohydrate and the difference is when glucose has got an aldehyde group as the functional group fructose has got a ketone group as the functional group and that is why uh, we define carbohydrates as polyhydroxy because they are bound to have multiple hydroxyl groups all carbohydrates are polyhydroxy aldoses or ketoses having the general molecular formula cnh2non from which we derive uh, the c6h12o6 of glucose and fructose so if you are asked what are carbohydrates your answer should be all carbohydrates are polyhydroxy aldoses or ketoses having the general molecular formula cnh2non now these carbohydrates are crudely classified as reducing and non reducing sugars uh, carbohydrates are crudely classified as reducing and non reducing sugars depending upon the presence or absence of reducing property which in turn will be dependent on the presence or absence of a free carbonyl group to make it simple any carbohydrate which has got a c double bond o group will be reducing and any carbohydrate which does not have a c double bond o group will be non reducing and that is why glucose which has got a carbonyl group in the first carbon atom and fructose which has got a carbonyl group in the second carbon atom are considered as reducing sugars but how about sucrose Uh, i hope you all know that sucrose is non reducing in spite of sucrose being made up of two reducing sugars sucrose is basically a disaccharide which is made up of two reducing sugars glucose and fructose and in spite of sucrose being made up of two reducing sugars glucose and fructose sucrose as such is non reducing and uh, for an explanation for that why would something with two reducing sugars be non reducing the answer is sucrose is formed by linking the first carbon atom of glucose with the second carbon atom of fructose that way neither the carbonyl group of glucose nor that of fructose will be free so if you are asked why is sucrose non reducing your answer should be because it lacks a free carbonyl group and in turn if you are asked why does it lack a free carbonyl group your answer should be because the linkage that is present in sucrose is alpha 1 2 i let you know what is alpha and what is beta a little later but for now i think you understand what is 1 comma 2 mean it means it's formed by linking the first carbon atom of glucose with the second carbon atom of fructose so let me repeat sucrose is non reducing because it lacks a free carbonyl group and again it lacks a free carbonyl group because the linkage that is present in sucrose is alpha 1 2 now uh, what is the test we perform to detect the presence or absence of a reducing sugar in a given solution 